Welcome back, everyone. This is Kevin Wallace again, and we're building on uh, the previous series of videos that we've been doing this month as we've been focusing on sea voice topics. This video is going to be focused on digit manipulation. Let's lay out a scenario that might require digit manipulation. Let's consider this topology. If we have a call coming in from the PSTN destined for this internal phone with a directory number of 3002, there are a couple of numbers we need to pay attention to the number that was called, the called number, which is also known as the DNIS, D-N-I-S, the Dial Number Information Service, that's the called number, and also the caller ID, which is sometimes called the ANI, A-N-I, Automatic Number Identification. As the call comes in, let's say that the person on the PSDN had dialed 303-3002, and their ANI, their caller ID, is being presented as 230-3333. It's probably okay to leave the ante as it is and let that number appear on the internal phone, but when the DNS, that seven digit dial string, hits router R2, we probably need to strip off the 303 because we're only using four digit dialing internally. And after we do that, that's going to give us a DNS of 3002, which is going to allow that router to route the call to that internal phone, and we'll leave the ante as it was. What about when we're calling out? We're calling out from 3002. We might need to dial a 9 to get an outside line. We might dial 9 and then 230, 3333. Three, three, three. But our ANI at this point is only going to be four digits, 3002. When we try to send that out to the PSTN, that caller on the PSTN looks down at their phone. What are they going to think if their caller ID is only four digits? That's obviously not enough. So what we want to do is we want to prepend our office code to that ante before we send it out to the PSTN. Oh, and by the way, we want to get rid of that 9, don't we? We're dialing a 9 to get an outside line, which is common in business telephone networks, but we certainly don't want to send the 9 out to the PSTN. So when we're done, this is the goal. We want the DNS going out to be 230-3333 with an ante of 303. We want to pre-pin that on to our internal directory number of 3002. And there are different ways that we could do digit manipulation. In fact, we already saw some digit manipulation in our previous video when we took a look at dial peers. Remember with a POTS dial peer, by default, the only digits that are forwarded out of that POTS dial peer are digits that matched a wildcard. Explicitly matched digits were going to be stripped off. Well, the way we have our dial peer set up in this example, we have a destination pattern going out, out to the PSTN, of 9 and then a capital T a 9 followed by any number of digits. The 9 is going to be an explicit match and therefore it's going to be stripped off. That's a big part of our digit manipulation right there, just the behavior of a POTS dial peer. And there are different ways that we could do the other digit manipulation, but we want to focus on voice translation rules. That's one of the more advanced ways of doing digit manipulation. Let's check out the structure of a sample voice translation rule. We can say voice translation hyphen rule and give a number and that takes us into voice translation rule configuration mode and from here we can specify as many as 15 sub rules and here I'm just specifying one rule, rule one and when you're looking at a voice translation rule the very first thing you might want to examine is what's inside the first set of forward slashes that's the pattern that we're trying to match, that's the matching pattern and we're saying if you match this replace it with that replace it with what's in the second set of forward slashes. In this case, a call is coming in and the DNS is 3033 three, followed by three other digits. I'm saying take that leading 3033 three from that number of 3033002 three, zero, 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 and replace the 3033 three, three with just one three. So if the DIN is coming in were 3033002, three, zero, 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 that would be replaced with just a three. 002. That's the rule, but the rule then needs to be applied to a voice translation profile. Here, we're creating a voice translation profile called digit hyphen strip, and we're saying, what exactly are we translating? It could be the called number, the DNS. It could be the ANI, the caller ID. It could be a redirected call number if we've called the phone and it didn't answer and we've redirected the call to a voicemail server, for example, so the voicemail server knows whose mailbox to send it to. We're keeping it simple here, though. We're saying we're going to translate the DNS, the called number. 
Once we've defined that in our voice translation profile, oh, and by the way, when we say translate called one, that one is referencing the voice translation rule that's numbered one. But once we've got this voice translation profile configured, we can then go into various places to apply it. I'm going to apply it to a pot style peer coming in. I've got an inbound pot style peer. And we're going to say translation hyphen profile incoming and give the name of the voice translation profile. Let's go out to our router now. And before we do any digit manipulation, let's do a debug ISDN Q931 and see what a call looks like coming in from the PSTN. From the PSTN, let's go off hook and let's dial 303-3002. And we get a busy signal. It didn't go through. Let's see if we can determine anything from the output on screen. We see that the calling number was 230-3333. That's the Annie. And the Dennis is 303-3002. The issue we're having right now is that there's not a mechanism inside of our router to strip off the 303 and we can see that the calls being unrouted because of an unallocated or an unassigned number in other words the router it only knows about 3002 it doesn't know about 303 3002 so we're going to have to strip off the 303 i wonder if we can call out to the pstn though let's try that let me show you the dial here that i've got configured let's do a show run pipe that to section dial peer. I've got a couple of dial peers. One is for the incoming direction and uh, the dial peer we're using to call out we're calling out of port 0 slash 2 slash 0 colon 23 and we're matching the pattern of 9T. So I can dial a 9 followed by any number of digits and press the pound sign if I want to terminate the inner digit timeout and the 9 is going to automatically be stripped off because it's an explicit match. Remember by default on a POTS dial peer only the digits that match a wild card are going to be forwarded. Let's place a call out to the PSTN. Let's go off hook and let's dial 9 to get an outside line and say 2303333 and I'll do a pound. And the call goes through. Everything works going out except if we look at the ANI that got sent out to the PSTN, the calling number, it's probably not sufficient, is it? It was only 3002. So we've got a couple of things to fix. For the call coming in, we want to strip off the leading 303. And for the call going out, we want to add on a 303 to the ANI information. Based on the translation rule syntax we saw earlier, let's create a couple of translation rules. Let's go into global configuration mode. And let's say voice translation hyphen rule. We'll number it one. That takes us into voice translation rule configuration mode. And let's give a rule. Rule one will say that the matching string begins with, that's what the caret indicates, it begins with a 3033. Three, and I want to replace those four digits with just one digit. I want to replace that with a three. So as the call comes in with a DNS of 303302, the leading 3033 is going to be replaced with just a 3, which we would then add on to the 002, giving us a dialed string of 3002. Let's now take that voice translation rule and uh, let's apply it to a voice translation profile. We'll say voice translation hyphen profile, and we'll name this profile digit hyphen strip because we're stripping off the office code and we'll say we want to translate the called number as opposed to the calling number based on voice translation rule one. We'll go into our dial peer. Let's say dial hyphen peer voice one. This is our inbound dial peer and we say translation hyphen profile in the incoming direction we want to apply the voice translation profile of digit hyphen strip. Let's create another voice translation rule to deal with the outgoing ANI, the outgoing caller ID. Let's say voice translation rule 2 and here our rule 1 is going to say if the string begins with a 3 
we want to replace that 3, as in 3002, we want to replace the leading 3 with 303, and then whatever the original dial string was. And I can do a backslash 0 to say whatever the matching string was, such as 3002, put it here. That's what the backslash 0 represents. I'm replacing with this 3002 with 303, 3002. I'm adding on a 303. That's our rule. Now let's take that voice translation rule and apply it to a voice translation profile. We'll say voice translation hyphen profile and we'll name this one prepend. We're prepending an office code to our outgoing caller ID. We'll say that we want to translate in this case the calling number, the caller ID, based on voice translation rule 2. Let's apply this to a dial here. By the way, this could also be applied to a voice board. You can apply these voice translation profiles to various places, but I'm going to use a dial here. Let's go into dial here configuration mode for dial here 3, and we'll say translation profile in the outgoing direction. We want to apply the voice translation profile of prepend. And at this point, I think we're done. Let's place the call again coming in from the PSTN, and let's see if the call goes through this time. It didn't before. Let's go off hook, and let's dial 303-3002. The call does go through this time. Notice that we have the same DNS, the same call to party that we had before, but now we're using that voice translation profile to strip off the 303. Let's place a call going out, and let's see if we have a better caller ID that we're sending out to the PSTN. Let's dial out again. And this time when the call goes out, if we take a look at the calling party number, the Annie, the caller ID, instead of being 3002 as it was before, now it's 303, 3002. So by using a couple of voice translation profiles in this demonstration, we've been able to strip off an office code coming in from the PSTN and we've been able to prepend an office code to caller ID information as we're going out to the PSTN. I hope you enjoyed this C-Voice configuration video, and as we're continuing to focus on one exam per month, what we will probably do in the next video is challenge you with some exam-style questions based on the videos that we've already done this month. So we'll quiz you to test your understanding and review some of the concepts we've already discussed. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video, and we'll see you next time.